lifestyle medicine is the use of lifestyle interventions directed at the treatment, management, and prevention of disease. Hey folks, Dr. Keel here, and I want to talk about this interesting study that was recently published. It's titled, Low Load, High Volume Resistance Exercise Stimulates Muscle Protein Synthesis More Than High Load, Low Volume Resistance Exercise. This was published by Bird et al. in the journal PLOS1. The objective is to determine the effect of resistance exercise intensity as determined by percentage of one repetition maximum and volume on muscle protein synthesis, anabolic signaling, and myogenic gene expression. It's well documented and intuitive that resistance exercise stimulates skeletal muscle protein synthesis. Muscular people generally don't get bigger or stronger sitting on their butts doing nothing. They get it playing sports and working out. What isn't as clear is how to optimize muscle growth and hypertrophy during resistance training. One commonly held belief is that high load, close to one rep max, is the best way to stimulate skeletal muscle growth. Recent research has suggested that you max out your myofibrillar protein synthesis at 60% of your one rep max. Blood flow restriction training, which has been in use by the military for several years and is gaining traction in pro sports circles, is another indicator that max weightlifting may not optimize muscle growth. The concept here is that you place a tourniquet, quote unquote, on the extremity you are training or rehabbing, which occludes vascular flow and promotes muscle protein synthesis at much lower weights, often 20% of your one rep max. The Army has been using this with its veterans with great results over the last few years. So this particular study sought to explore the separate influences of load and volume on specific anabolic variables after acute resistance exercise. It included 15 men, average age of 21 with an average BMI of 24, who performed four sets of unilateral leg extension exercises at different exercise loads and or volumes. This included 90% of one repetition max until volitional failure, or just 90% of your max until failure, 30% of one rep max, which was work matched to whatever you did to your 90% fail, and then 30% of one rep max performed until you failed. To explain the 30% work match, if your one rep max is 100 and you did 90% until fail for 10 reps, let's say that that's 900 pounds total, what the 30% is is saying you do 30 pounds times 30 reps to get to 900 pounds. Infusion of radio-labeled phenylalanine was used to measure rates of mixed myofibrillar and sarcoplasmic protein synthesis at rest 4 hours and 24 hours after exercise. The results, of course, were very interesting. Exercise at 30% of work match to 90% fail induced a significant increase above rest in mixed and myofibrillar protein synthesis at 4 hours post-exercise. At 24 hours, only mixed protein synthesis was increased. The increase in the rate of mixed and myofibrillar protein synthesis at 4 hours post-exercise with 90% to fail and 30% to fail was greater than 30% work matched, with no difference between the two fail groups. At 24 hours, myofibrillary protein synthesis was only elevated in the 30% max to fail. The authors also looked at several signaling pathways related to muscle protein synthesis. I'm not going to go over these specifically because it's highly technical. If you're interested in this level of detail, just pause the video and you can read this on your own. And in conclusion, these results suggest that low load, high volume resistance exercise is more effective in inducing acute muscle anabolism than high load, low volume. More specifically, exercising at 30% of your one rep max until fail induced similar increases of myofibrillar protein synthesis at four hours, but was actually greater or sustained at 24 hours compared to the 90% one rep max until fail. Why this occurs is still unclear, but according to the authors, is likely associated with muscle fiber activation and type 2 fiber recruitment. So the big question is, how do you incorporate this into your workout? How much traction will this gain in professional athletes? This obviously remains to be seen, but it certainly throws a wrench into some of the commonly held beliefs of resistance weight training.